right. Hello, everyone. Uh, so like David mentioned, uh, this is uh, a, a team spot which uses OpenAI function calling and Microsoft Graph. So uh, let's start with the boring slide first. My name is Anup uh, and uh, I work as a developer in a company called as Content and Cloud and I'm a Microsoft MVP in the Microsoft 365 developer category. Uh, links to my profile, blogs and Twitter and GitHub can follow me on those platforms if needed. All right, let's look at the demo first, and then uh, we'll go and look into the code. Okay, so what we have here, like I said, is a Teams bot. Now you might see some chat history. Please ignore all that for now. Imagine that this is a, a new chat. Uh, and this is a bot, uh, which is a personal assistant. And what it does is, um, you yeah, know, it, it can, provide information uh, uh, for you based on uh, you know what you have in your calendar or uh, uh, in your contact details or uh, your planner etc so at, at the moment it's just three, these three elements but it can be extended in the future as well so for example if i go and ask the bot for some reason who am i uh, what happens here is uh, uh, the question is sent to the bot. The bot uh, then uh, uses the power of Microsoft Graph and OpenAI, and then uh, you know gets back the uh, result and and displays it. So we can go ahead and ask another question related to our calendar. So to say, uh, uh, when am I meeting Megan next? And then uh, what happens here again is uh, based on the question, uh, uh, OpenAI tells that we need to use Microsoft Graph in order to get the events uh, from the calendar. So all the events from my calendar are retrieved uh, and those events are sent to OpenAI, which, uh, which is then formatted in a nice way. And then the result is uh, obtained saying uh, I'm meeting Megan. Uh, for the sprint meeting on September 1st and with all the other time details as well. Uh, and if I ask another question saying, what are my contact details? Uh, so this time what happens is again, uh, Microsoft Graph uh, comes into picture uh, and then the uh, information about myself is retrieved and that information is sent to OpenAI and then OpenAI formats that response and then uh, provides it uh, in a nice manner. Uh, so like I said, the scope is uh, limited at the moment to my contact details, my meetings, and my tasks. Uh, so if I just ask a random question saying, uh, uh, what time is the next train? Uh, so, you know, uh, because this is out of scope, um, OpenAI comes back saying, uh, you know, it can't help with train schedules. Right, so that's the demo. Uh, so like I said, it's it's a bot uh, which uses the power of OpenAI and Microsoft Graph uh, in order to uh, get the information and uh, show that to us. Now, back to the slides. So uh, th the scope of this bot, uh, uh, you know, it is applicable to both OpenAI and Azure OpenAI. Uh, however, in this particular sample, we are using OpenAI only, but it can be changed to Azure OpenAI uh, very easily. And then the OpenAI models that uh, to which this sample is applicable uh, are GPT 3.5 Turbo and GPT 4. Uh, those uh, can be changed in the configuration, which we'll have a look in a minute. Right, uh, so before jumping into the code, let's understand what uh, OpenAI function calling is. Um, once we have an idea of that, uh, we can look into how we can use function calling within our code. So the way I think of OpenAI function calling is um, it provides an ability to extend the OpenAI models. Uh, so basically adds the capability uh, to, to get real time information. Uh, say, for example, if you go to ChatGPT today or any other application uh, which uses OpenAI API or Azure OpenAI API, uh, and if you go to one of those applications and then ask 
uh, for current weather, uh, then uh, the reply is, uh, uh, you know, it, it won't be able to get the current weather because the model has been trained up till uh, September 2021, so it can't retrieve that information. However, what OpenAI have done a few months back is they've given us the ability to inform OpenAI that uh, our uh, our code has some functions which can get weather information. So it can be, uh, you know, getting the current weather or getting the weather forecast, etc. Now, if we inform OpenAI that our code has these functions and provide our question along with it, then OpenAI tells us which function we need to call from our code based on the question. Uh, so in this case, for example, uh, if we ask the current weather, then OpenAI uh, and also tell OpenAI that we have a function in our code, which is called get current weather, then OpenAI tells us uh, you need to call the get current weather function. Uh, and if there are any arguments saying uh, location or something, uh, OpenAI tells us uh, what, what the value of that argument uh, should be as well. Uh, now that's function calling in, in brief, but uh, let's take a look at that in detail for our current scenario. So here on the left, we've got this uh, Teams application or Teams bot, which uses OpenAI API. Uh, now this can be a Teams app or any other app, like I said, which uses uh, OpenAI API. Um, as you can see, uh, Imagine that this app doesn't have function ca calling ability yet. Uh, so if I ask a question saying, uh, am I meeting John soon? Uh, then OpenAI responds uh, saying, I do not have access to your calendar. Now, with the introduction of function calling, what happens is uh, uh, we send the question, am I meeting John soon to OpenAI? Along with that, we also send a few functions that we have in our code. Now, these uh, functions uh, in this case are get my details, get my events, and get my tasks. Uh, there can be more functions as well, but at the moment, uh, uh, we'll send these functions. And we also tell what arguments these functions expect. Now, OpenAI gets this information, and based on the question, am I meeting John soon, uh, what OpenAI tells us is, we need to call the get my events function from our code. And it also uh, tells that uh, there's an argument called as future events, uh, which has to be set to true. Now this future events argument, we would have passed that uh, to OpenAI. Um, so, uh, so based on the question that we sent earlier, am I meeting John soon? OpenAI tells us we need to call the get my events function. If the, now, if the question was something different, like when are my next tasks? Uh, coming up, uh, OpenAI would have told us that we need to call the get my tasks function and not get my events. So uh, uh, once once we have that response from OpenAI, what we do in our code is we go ahead and run this get my events function. Uh, so that function basically uses Microsoft Graph, gets the information from the calendar, uh, and then that raw response, the JSON uh, with all the meeting details is passed back to OpenAI. So here uh, you can see a sample response, uh, which says that is a particular meeting and any attendees, although it says Megan, there is an attendee, John as well. Uh, I have just hidden that. Uh, and then that particular response is sent to OpenAI. Now, what OpenAI does is based on the initial question and this particular response, uh, it converts that JSON into natural language and tells that uh, you're meeting John at 11 a.m. tomorrow. And what we do in our application is we take that response and uh, uh, put that in the chat. Uh, so that's what function calling is. Based on the question, uh, OpenAI tells us which function to call. Uh, hence the name function calling. We then call that function, send the response to OpenAI, and uh, uh, display the response from OpenAI again. Right, now that we have understood what function calling is, uh, let's uh, look at the code for the team spot. Uh, now this particular sample uh, is uh, present in the uh, team samples uh, repository. Uh, if you go to that sample, all, uh, it is built using Teams Toolkit. So if you want to test it locally, all uh, we have to do is just press F5 uh, and then sit back and relax. And <laughs> uh, So 
uh, uh, let's look at the code. Uh, so in the in the code, we've got a few env files. The first one is the uh, uh, the env dot local. Now this is used when we are uh, developing uh, the app locally. Uh, so in that particular file, uh, we just need to go ahead and set the OpenAI API key. Uh, uh, and also we need to set the model uh, that we need to use. Now, in order to get the key, uh, we have to go to the OpenAI website and create an account, uh, and then we can get an API key from there. Uh, the, the other settings that we see in this uh, env file are related to the uh, related to the bot. So uh, if you if you've worked with bots before, uh, you know you know that there's an app registration for the bot, uh, the tenant IDs, authorities, and all those settings uh, which are all present over here. Right. So once we set the keys, um, uh, this this particular bot is a is a command bot. So we've got this uh, initialize file. Uh, uh, just before that. This particular sample is an extension of the Teams SSO bot sample, which was created by Microsoft. Uh, that particular sample shows how to use SSO within Microsoft Teams bot. Uh, I've just taken that sample and added OpenAI to it. Uh, so uh, it's a command bot, but can be another uh, any other bot as well. So this particular uh, bot is a command bot and just accepts uh, any command, uh, which any command which is sent to it. So basically any question. Uh, so here uh, we start with some config wherein we uh, put the bot ID and the password, and then we do the SSO config, uh, which includes uh, defining the graph scopes, the client ID, uh, client secret and the tenant ID as well. And finally, uh, we've got the command. In this case, uh, there are no commands. However, there is one uh, uh, SSO command, uh, which is that one, user query handler. So uh, as per the name, it, it is used to handle user queries. And uh, if we look at that file, which is called user query handler, uh, that particular class uh, implements the Teams FX port SSO command handler. Uh, and that particular interface has this method called as uh, or asks to implement this method called as hand, handle command received. And this is where a uh, lot of the uh, hard work happens. Uh, so once the command is received, uh, what we do is we get the on behalf of user credential. Uh, and with that credential, we go ahead and create a graph client. Now, uh, these two uh, 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 these two classes, the on behalf of user credential and create Microsoft Graph with credential uh, method, uh, and these are provided by the Microsoft Teams FX library. So with just these two lines, uh, we are able to get the on behalf of uh, credential uh, and uh, token, uh, and then also go ahead and create uh, an authenticated graph client, which is basically authenticated on behalf of the logged in user. So just two lines for that. And then we go ahead and just set the graph client. Uh, and uh, over here, what we do is we go ahead and initialize OpenAI. So in this case, uh, we are using the OpenAI library. Uh, we just uh, go ahead and initialize the OpenAI client by passing the key to it. Uh, and once that happens, uh, we need to pass some of these messages to OpenAI. So the way OpenAI works is uh, we need to pass a system message first and then some of the user questions uh, and the uh, the functions which we'll have a look in a minute. Uh, and then uh, uh, finally the user question itself, like I mentioned earlier, right? So the first is the system message. So in this case, uh, the system message is, uh, you know, something like you are a personal assistant, you need to help the user with their queries. That that message can be changed to um, anything uh, based on the requirement. Uh, and then we add in the user question. Uh, so in this case, when am I meeting Megan next? And then uh, we go ahead and call OpenAI with the uh, with these messages. Now in in the call OpenAI method, uh, what we do is uh, you know we we create this create chat completion method. Uh, uh, that is part of the OpenAI library. And to that, uh, we pass in the message and the functions. So uh, the message in this case is just one question, which is when am I meeting Megan next? And then the functions, we, we pass three functions like I showed in the slide earlier, get my details, get my events, and get my tasks. Now, 
the important bit is uh, the description of these functions. So each function need to ha have a clear and concise description uh, so that OpenAI can look at the question and then based on the description of these functions, tell us which function to call. So in this case, the question is, when am I meeting Megan next? And OpenAI uh, looks at this particular description, uh, uh, which is, oh, sorry, which is that one, get events uh, in a calendar of the current user. Uh, so uh, based on that, it tells us to call that particular function. So just to show you how that uh, function looks, uh, this is just one of the functions. So get my uh, the name of the function is get my events. It has a nice description. Uh, we need to pass in a, a couple of, uh, in this case, one argument, but it can be more than one, one argument. Uh, that particular argument tells us what to do. Right, um, so that's the function. So what we do is we pass the messages and the functions to OpenAI. Uh, and then OpenAI responds uh, saying, uh, you know, we need to call a function, name of the function is that, and we need to uh, call it with those particular arguments. So it's a, a OpenAI uh, response in a JSON. Uh, so what we go, do here is go ahead and parse that JSON uh, and then get the name of the function, get the arguments uh, for that function as well. So we know that we need to uh, call the function get my events with the argument get future events only as true. And once we know which function to call, we go ahead and call that function. In this case, get my events. And here uh, you can see that uh, the implementation of get my events function is such that we go ahead and call the slash me slash events using the graph client. Uh, and then this will return all the events to us. Uh, so we take those events, which is in a raw JSON format, uh, and then pass the, those, the result of that uh, back to OpenAI. So uh, in order to do that, we just have to uh, get the function result, which is the JSON, and then put it in a, uh, in a format called as function message, which is again, uh, just a, uh, you know, a nice JSON to say, this is a, a, syst a function message or a function response. Uh, so we get that result, pass that back to OpenAI, and then uh, OpenAI then responds uh, saying, uh, you know, we need to stop the execution now. And then that's the response which OpenAI provides saying, we are meeting Megan on, uh, on the date, etc. Right, uh, so uh, yeah, so basically what happens here is uh, the raw JSON uh, with the event details is passed OpenAI, and then OpenAI looks at the question and this response and then converts that into plain text and uh, sends it back to us. Right, uh, so the summary, uh, function calling is available in OpenAI and Azure OpenAI. Uh, in this particular sample, we, see, uh, we saw how to use that in OpenAI, but it can be changed to Azure OpenAI as well. Uh, this particular sample is not brought ready uh, uh, because uh, we are using OpenAI. Uh, 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 it makes sense to use Azure OpenAI because we are dealing with uh, uh, you know uh, internal data. Uh, so I am planning to create a pull request soon uh, for the sample with uh, using Azure OpenAI. Um, and then uh, the other thing is because we are calling OpenAI twice here in the second request, there's no need to pass the functions. So I uh, need to clean up that as well. Right, uh, and here are the some of the resources that were used as part of this. Uh, and I'll be monitoring the chat for any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you.